This is the eighth video in a series of my reports on what's happening at General Convention. We began with a rouser of a communion service this morning, with music being provided by a local black gospel choir, with people literally standing and singing with hands in the air in worship. It was really quite extraordinary for an Episcopal General Convention. But you could tell that people were worshiping out of their hearts. It really was quite extraordinary. So much so that after the communion service was concluded, the gospel choir over in the corner kept singing to several hundred people who at that point were holding up their smartphones and taking videos of what was happening. From there, uh, I went into House of Bishops. Our deputies, of course, went into House of Deputies. And I really am happy to report that it was a very upbeat day in a lot of ways. Uh, we, plant, we passed some new initiatives around church planting. Uh, the conversation on the House of Deputies on structure was beneficial in a way that I think is guiding us toward a stronger center. And everyone I spoke with today, particularly after what happened yesterday in terms of around marriage, was, it was like, this is better news. And then for me, the cap of the day was going to the dinner this evening. Seminaries all host dinners on a particular night. I went to the one at Neshota House. I went to the one at Neshota House in part because one, as you know, many of you know, I resigned from the board of Trinity School for Ministry. So I didn't go to the Trinity board meeting. We also have a number of alums from Neshota and I've been up there several times to preach and to spend some pastoral time with students and faculty. And it was a delightful evening. There's some really wonderful things that are going on in the life of the Shutter House. Plus, it was just great fellowship. And many of the very excellent writers that I hope you have taken advantage to read from the Covenant blog, like uh, Jordan Hilden and Zach Giuliano were also there. So it was great to catch up with them and get their sense of what's going on in the life of the church. In fact, if you're not aware, aware of the Covenant blog, online, I would encourage you to go there and really feast on some of the very excellent analysis of what's happening here at General Convention that's going on through their writing. It's a real gift to the wider church. So that's, of course, not a lot to report in comparison to what's the content of your previous days, but we're now moving actually more toward the latter end of convention. Uh, we still have a major piece to tackle which has to do with budget. The budget was just posted online this afternoon and so there'll be some major conversations about that because that gets into what resolutions, even if they're passed, how do they get funded? And it really will be program, budget, and finance that makes determinations on even if a resolution gets passed and they allocate in that resolution two billion dollars, for example, to cover the cost. Program, budget, and finance will still be the ones to determine how much they're actually going to get in the budget. And it may not look like $2 million at all. It could be 500000 or something like that. And so in many ways, like is often true in our local parishes, the budget actually defines what program will happen. Who will be there on staff? How much will they make? What will be the emphasis this year? What will program and budget and finance choose to fund? There have been some hearings about that, just like there have been hearings in other places with people making their case on why we need to make sure that the cause I am so passionately committed to will be funded by the wider church. But now we get into that portion of the convention where those decisions are actually made. And so stay tuned because that will say a lot about our future. And we're already beginning to deliberate finally as a deputation about how we will be organizing our presentation to the diocese about our experience at General Convention, which will be coming up in mid-July on a Saturday at St. Luke and St. Peter's in St. Cloud. So if you want to know more, I would encourage you to make sure that you try to come to that meeting. But in the meantime, we feel a sense of God's presence in the midst of the ups and downs and we're continuing to speak the truth, to build relationships, and see how God might use us. Oh, and one last thing, congratulations to Jabril Ballantine for his election to Executive Council. Bye, and thank you very much.